Currently, there are 11 unique locations in Last Day on Earth, and in today's video, I will be explaining each one of them. Make sure to watch until the end. Enjoy the video. The motel is a permanent location situated north of the global map, requiring 24 energy to travel to, and resetting every 36 hours. The motel is a medium difficulty location intended for beginners, having low tier enemies like roaming zombies and fast biters. The loot is mediocre, but it's worth clearing for one guaranteed grenade in a chest, which requires burglar level 1 to open. The second section of the motel is the basement, located in the top left part of the building. This area is more challenging with tougher zombies such as toxic spitters and toxic abominations. Clearing the basement is essential for gathering screws, an important item for settlement progression. I have a video explaining everything you need to know about the motel. The factory is a permanent location introduced to replace the pine wood resource zone requiring 28 energy to travel to and resetting every 48 hours. It is a medium difficulty area with enemies like toxic spitters and floater bloaters. The loot here is similar to a red resource zone, with items like guns and even C4. You will need to bring 12 transistors in total, 6 to open 2 chests, and 6 more to activate mechanisms for accessing the main building at the center of the map. Inside the building, you can clear the path by activating valves open a door leading to the basement area of the factory. In the basement, you will encounter toxic spitters, floater bloaters and toxic abominations, along with electric and gas traps that require switches to disable. Clearing the basement is essential for gathering antennas, a key item for settlement progression. The farm is a permanent location situated right next to the motel requiring 33 energy to travel to and resetting every 48 hours. To access the farm, you first need to repair a bridge using basic resources. This is a challenging location, with tough zombies like rotten yokels, savage giants, and the ravager, the farm's main boss. I recommend watching this video where I demonstrate the best and cheapest way to clear the farm and defeat the ravager. The farm contains rare materials, including oak, aluminum bars and plates, steel plates, gasoline, weapons like glocks and M16s, bandages, medkits, and even chopper parts like engine parts, chopper wheels, forks, and gas tanks. Clearing the farm is essential for completing the chopper and helps players in the general progression in the game. The police department is a permanent location situated east on the global map, requiring 51 in the digital travel to and resetting every 72 hours. This is a challenging location to clear, especially for beginners, as it contains enemies such as brawlers, hungry chompers, explosive and riot zombies. I highly recommend watching my video to learn the cheapest way to clear the police department. The police department is essential for crafting weapon modifications. Here we can find items like spring, adhesive, aeroblades, plastic and branches. However, the main attraction is the arena, where you can fight waves of zombies in exchange for cards that can be used to open crates or containing high tier loot, such as guns, armor, healing items and more. You will need to repair terminals to unlock even more crates. The infected forest is a permanent location located north on the global map, requiring 37 energy to travel to and resetting every 72 hours. It's a challenging area with zombies like toxic spitters and floater bloaters, but most notably, it features the witch, the main boss of this zone. When the witch's head reaches 1500 and 500, she will spawn a horde of zombies from cocoons. You can take them down using a shotgun with spread shot, a grenade or a milkcore MGL. Alternatively, you can prevent this by simply exploding the cocoon with a C4. The witch will drop her head, which can be used to stop zombie attacks on your base. Though it's generally not worth it, most players defeat the witch only to complete the raider's task. The gas station is a permanent location situated next to the pine grove, requiring 30 energy to travel to. It's a peaceful zone with no zombies. Instead, you will find various attractions, including the slot machine where you can use caps to earn rewards, Jane the mechanic who offers bike upgrades in exchange for vehicle spare parts, and the VIP zone which is accessible only to premium players. The second section of the gas station is the highway, a small area with a few zombies like fast biters and rotters. The highway resets every 48 hours, and clearing this location is important for gathering spark plugs for settlement progression, as well as the single car engine you can find for raiders tasks. 
Bunker Alpha is a permanent location found east on the global map, requiring 31 energy to travel to and resetting every 48 hours. To enter Bunker Alpha for the first time, you need an Alpha CAC card to open the main door and then a code to access its sublevels. The hub contains a few enemies and loot chests, as well as terminals that can be activated using coupons to receive amazing rewards. There's also a locked chest that can only be accessed by using the cut off finger, which can be found in the destroyed convoy event. The three main floors are the primary attraction of Bunker Alpha. Each floor has a variety of zombies, including toxic spitters, floater bloaters, toxic abominations, frenzy giants, as well as traps and turrets. You can also activate the hard mode version of Bunker Alpha if you choose, where enemies have increased armor and damage. Hard mode allows you to access the room with the blind one on the third floor. Bunker Alpha is the best location in the game, as it offers some of the highest quality loot available, including resources like iron, copper, aluminum and steel, as well as guns, armor, midkits and much more. It can be efficiently cleared using the wall trick, so be sure to check out my video where I demonstrate the cheapest way to clear all floors of Bunker Alpha. Bunker Bravo is a permanent location found north on the global map, requiring 40 energy to travel to and resetting every 48 hours. To access Bunker Bravo's sublevels, you will need an electronic generator. Bunker Bravo is by far the most challenging location in the game. The zombies here have high health and deal significant damage. Additionally, radiation causes the player to lose health over time, making it even tougher to survive. The bosses, especially Dr. Dread, are amongst the hardest to defeat. In the hub of Bunker Bravo, you can repair terminals to help clear the floors. Some terminals like ventilation clearance and turret deactivation are essential but you can only activate two terminals at a time. Unfortunately, clearing Bunker Bravo is a must for completing the ATV as it provides necessary items such as gas cylinders, carbon composite, car batteries and cogs. So make sure to farm enough guns for the best mode possible or wait for the seasonal event for Bunker Bravo as it makes the zone easier to clear. The port is a permanent location situated along the coast on the global map, requiring 33 energy to travel to. The port itself doesn't contain any enemies, but offers several activities for players. Starting with the sewers, you will need an electronic generator to gain access. The sewers feature various enemies such as swamp bloaters, zombies, mermen and crawlers. Throughout the sewers, you will find ladders leading to other sections, though only two ladders are accessible per reset. Clearing the sewers is crucial for gathering resources to build the boat, as well as asbestos, essential item for settlement progression. The sewers reset every 48 hours. Next is the delivery system, a mini game where you deliver boxes that contain various materials. By completing deliveries, you can obtain items like caps and even an ATV transmission. Along with earning reputation which grants additional rewards like a crane key, the crane key can be used to open the sunken box. The delivery system resets at midnight. The port also features the boat, a new vehicle that allows players to travel to additional locations, including the sand quarry and dead island. The boat consumes gasoline, so remember to bring enough for your travels. Lastly, there is the Genesis Laboratory, a bunker-like area accessible through the main gate. The lab has a hub and two operational floors, though the third floor currently serves no purpose. The second floor contains four sectors, each unlocked by refilling the bioreactor using flora items such as carrot seeds, plant fiber, and seaweed. Each sector presents unique zombies, traps, and bosses, and every time you enter a sector, you'll choose a perk that provides an advantage in clearing the lab. The port lab is a challenging location best suited for advanced players. A separate video is needed to fully explain everything the lab has to offer. The transport hub is a permanent location located east on the global map, requiring 51 energy to travel to and resetting every 48 hours. To access the main area, you will need a drone to open the main gates. This is one of the hardest locations to clear, as it features tough zombies with enhanced armor and damage. Additionally, you may encounter one of the, the area's two bosses the miner or the butcher. Both are challenging opponents that could require a dedicated video to explain strategies to, for defeating them. After defeating the boss, you will obtain a key that reveals the positions of loot crates inside the main building. There are four crates in total, but only three are accessible initially. You will need to repair this forklift to access the fourth crate. After scanning all crates, you can return and choose one of the three crates to open. 
each offering unique loot. Furthermore, if you repair the bridge, you will gain access to another building that holds a few zombies. Once cleared, this area provides access to the drone modification table, which you can use to craft mods for the drone. The transport hub offers some of the best loot in the game, including high-tech components, air filters, electronic circuits, factory parts, carbon composite, and much more. Certain crates provide essential resources crucial for settlement progression. And that's about it. Every location explained. What location I should cover in a separate video. Make sure to comment down below. Make sure to subscribe as only a small percentage of my viewers are actually subscribed. Watch my video where I ranked every location in a tier list. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video. Bye bye.